Hmm. What is he to me? <laughs> He's just my son. We enjoy getting away from our lives and being here together to hunt and get in a tree. I'm probably one of the only few people who could enjoy him all the way from the beginning of the morning uh, before the sun rises till the sun sets and after the sunset at night. And uh, he hunts with a bow and I hunt with a camera. Uh, our, our relationship is not special because it's easy. It's special because uh, we've chosen to make it that way. It's interesting to, uh, to realize how different uh, a son can be from a father. I grew up with the idea of going through high school, going to college, getting a degree, and uh, getting the kind of work that I could make enough money that uh, my wife would be able to stay home and raise the kids. And I was sort of in that rut of, of uh, go to school, get a degree, uh, find a good place to work. Uh, well, it turns out that Trevin just wasn't interested in that. Uh, well, he did. He, he went through high school. He went to the university, went through one year, and then finally said, this is just not for me. So he got in a different rut. And it was a little bit of a difficult thing for me because I didn't know how to coach him through that. I knew how to coach him through high school wrestling. I knew how to help him get into the university in terms of wrestling. And, and I knew how to help him in that arena. But in this arena, I didn't know I didn't know how to do that, um, but it was a joy for me to watch him form his own way, make his own path, get himself in his rut. I had my path and the way I thought things should go, uh, but he had a different one. Now they were going in the same direction, but they weren't the same path, they weren't the same rut. And uh, kudos to him that he would form his own direction and make his own path even when he didn't have somebody going down that same path before him. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. I wanted to find something that every morning when I got up, I enjoyed going to work. I enjoyed, uh, I, I just didn't think life should be about eight to five or nine to five or whatever. I thought a life should be about life. And so for me, I think when I looked at my future, I wanted to get up every morning excited about the day, not excited about punching a time clock. So I think there are some, some synonymous paths Dad and I had in regards to hard work, but very different paths in regards to the regiment and the safety net, if you will, of working a nine to five and one that's not a nine to five. The best thing about this is just the camaraderie, just the being together just the friendship that we have. It's one thing to have a family relationship. It's another thing to actually have a friendship. It's one thing to love someone. It's another thing to like them and to like being with them. And we have that, that happens here. The best thing that I get out of it is just being able to be with my son. You make memories. When you have sort of traumatic times, the more traumatic the time that you have together, the better the memory is. And um, the sweeter the memory. And uh, well, what we've discovered is as you, as you do those things together, then you grow closer together. And that's been really cool. I think what I like most about spending time in the tree with Dad is I get to share with him what I'm so passionate about. To have that moment in time when that buck that you've been dreaming about all year comes by, and then to share it with him. November. It's a special time, especially when you get to spend it with your dad in the tree.
for me, adoption was very natural, very normal. And um, when, when I adopted Trevin and his big sister, uh, they were my children. And uh, so I saw absolutely no difference in raising a, an adopted son uh, and raising a, 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 a natural son, a birth son. Made no difference to me. I don't feel I missed out on anything. Again, maybe I was fortunate because I was at such a young age, but I don't remember ever a time sitting there wondering why I didn't have a dad. All I remember is thinking, wow, I have a dad. I wouldn't trade that for anything. It doesn't really matter how the relationship starts. It's what you do with it in the process of, of living. And, um, and, and both of us have had to make those choices. A relationship is a two-way street. You can't, one person can't do it on their own. Both have to choose. And uh, I've seen the choices he's made and, and have appreciated them. And then, of course, I know the choices that I've made. And I know that he appreciates those as well. The sacrifices he made, I mean, I think what you have to do is you have to take a look at what it was to be a 23 or 24 year old young man and look from through my dad's eyes. And a seven, eight year old energetic, hyperactive boy and a 10 year old girl and raise them as your own. I mean, this is the man that went and found my biological father and got him to sign the release so that he could adopt me. I have memories of him. We lived in this, these little apartments. I, I, I come to find out they were lower income housing. I didn't know that at the time, but these little apartments. And he would get on his 10 speed bike and ride to school when he was finishing up his last year of school because that's the year mom and, and him got married. And I remember sitting on the, standing on the front porch as he rode off and he would ride a wheelie down the street. And I just thought he was, I just thought he was the most incredible, incredible guy in the world. And he is. He's proven that to be true. I'm 47 years old. I wasn't wrong. 40 years of, of watching his life. And I wasn't wrong. He's incredible. And I am blessed beyond measure the day that he walked into our little church and raised his hand and asked for prayer for his volleyball team. Yeah, pretty awesome.